Hey guys, welcome back. So first off, this is not a sponsored review. I bought this product with my own cash money, so hopefully that buys me some shred of credibility. Second of all, this is going to be a collaboration. I reached out to a few of the guys and asked them if they'd spend their own cash money on one of these little chargers and try it out for a month and then make a video review about it. And I thought that would be a little interesting because it's the same product, but each one of us is going to have a different application and a different use for it. And I thought that might uh, ring out the differences and uh, give a little bit more insight into this little product. <clears throat> so this is it right here. This is the Harbor Freight uh, automatic battery float charger. I got it for $4.99 and I'll leave a link to this coupon down below if you want to pick one up. So I've got some notes here. Uh, I've, been playing with, I've been playing with this thing for about two weeks and I think I've gathered enough data to uh, give this thing a fair assessment. Uh, so I'd like to uh, go over my notes with you and then I'll give you a little demonstration on how I gathered all this data on my 2004 uh, Ford Crown Vic. So first off, uh, when I found this thing online, um, I, I wanted to get one just to have a, a backup charger. And uh, it was at nighttime, so I, I had some hours to kill before the Harbor Freight opened. So the first thing I did is I went on YouTube and I started watching r reviews on this thing. And I watched about 20 different reviews and before I would watch the review, the first thing I would do is I would go straight to the comment section to see what people were saying about this thing. And uh, from what I gathered in the comment section is that the positive and negative feedback is split right down the middle at just about 50%. Uh, 50% of the comments, uh, people would say uh, this thing is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, it works for them, they've been using it for years, and it's the best thing you can get for five bucks. Now, on the other side of that, the negative reviews, uh, half of the negative reviews, people would say uh, this thing was either dead out of the box, uh, never worked, or it worked once and then never again, or uh, they put it on their battery and it overcharged their battery by... Uh, boiling all of the water sulfuric acid solution out of the battery and it damaged it and they ended up having to get a new battery. So I really uh, went into this with uh, low expectations and I was really curious to why um, this thing has so many mixed reviews between uh, being the greatest thing and being the worst thing. And um, I think I may have uh, figured that out uh, playing with this thing for two weeks. So the first thing I would like to note is that this little uh, battery charger, uh, they've got four different partner or four different item numbers here: uh, six nine five nine four, six nine nine five five, six four two eight four, and four two two nine two. And I think that uh, is partly responsible for all of these mixed reviews. Uh, this charger has been out for many years and over the years they keep changing it and improving it. And um, I, I think I have a feeling that's accounting for uh, the quality control differences and people's different uh, experiences with this thing. So this one here, I've got the uh, 6.4 284 and so I have a feeling uh, this review is going to be uh, different from anybody else who has one of these who grabs the different uh, one of the three other uh, model numbers I have a feeling they're going to be different in their uh, powder ratings and how they operate so uh, what is it what does it do and what is it and does it do what it's supposed to do um, well, this this thing is a uh, a little uh, a low power battery charger that is meant to uh, keep your battery from dying uh, 
uh, if you don't drive your car uh, frequently enough, you know, say you drive it once a week or once a month or whatever, and even if you do drive your car every day, I still like using these chargers uh, to keep the battery charged. When I'm out here messing with the car, playing the radio, or testing out some new LED bulbs, I like to recharge the battery. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to go over uh, this uh, owner's manual real quick. And I've highlighted some of these things that uh, have caught my attention. And I've retyped them just so they're a little bit easier to read. So the first thing on here in the owner's manual, it says, uh, due to continuing improvements, actual product may differ slightly from the product described herein. So again, uh, I think they're going uh, over the years through some improvements and they're making changes to these things and that has uh, a direct effect on how they operate. And uh, number two, it says on in the owner's manual, it says maximum output 13.2 volts. And uh, that's, uh, just keep that in mind. And the second, or the third thing I think is interesting is it says, do not use if the battery is less than 12 volts. <clears throat> Uh, number four, it says, do not touch clips together while plugged in. Well, I did that uh, just to see what would happen, and it causes sparks. So uh, you probably don't want to do that around any uh, ignitable uh, gases. And um, next on here, it says, do not turn on equipment when the battery charger is in use. And uh, I really don't like that because uh, sometimes I like charging the battery while I'm actually... Uh, using something like playing the radio, so keep that in mind. And then it also says on here, it says, unplug clips when not in use. And I have a feeling that's because of the red LED status light on this little thing. It, it will actually drain the battery, and I actually measured that, <clears throat> and it was 3 milliamp. You know, not very much, but over time I'm sure that could uh, not help. And then uh, on here it says for indoor use only. And I think that's a little misleading because anytime you're charging a battery, you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area uh, just to uh, so you don't um, breathe some of the uh, hydro, uh, those dangerous gases that are coming out of the battery when it's being charged. And then the next thing on here, it says, do not reverse polarity. And I found out in a YouTube review that will actually kill the charger. So if you hook this up, thing back, hook this up backwards, it'll actually kill the uh, charger. Okay, so um, I did two tests on this. And the first test I did is I wanted to check uh, this claim right here. And on the package, it says it has a automatic safety shutoff. And it says it has a floating circuit, maintains a full charge without overcharging. So I wanted to make sure uh, this thing was going to be safe to use for my application. So what I did is I came up with this little test. And what I did is I uh, fully charged my battery with my Schumacher uh, smart charger right over here. And I, I put it through an 8 hour charge cycle. And when it was finished, I tried to charge it again with my Schumacher, and the Schumacher uh, shut off. So that right there let me know that the battery was fully charged. So then what I did is I waited uh, 15 minutes, and then I hooked up the Harbor Freight uh, float charger. And um, when I started this test, I was at 12.91 volts. And I, I measured the uh, the current coming out of the uh, charger into the battery, and then I also was monitoring how many how many watts the charger was pulling out of the wall, and then I also took note of the temperature of the transformer, and it was cold here. And this test went on for five hours, and I, I measured all of these readings every five hours, and the first hour it jumped up one volt from 12.91 all the way to 13.91 
And then the second hour, it went up to 14.03. Uh, third hour, 14.11. And then 14.18 and 14.24. And as you can see, uh, the milliamp uh, current uh, stayed the same the whole five hours, 408 milliamps. But something interesting is the wattage that it was pulling out of the wall was increasing and it kept increasing from 6.5 to 6.8, 6.9, all the way to 7. And the temperature of the transformer uh, got warmer, warmer, and eventually got hot. And after the fifth, after the fifth hour, at the five hour mark, uh, I could hear my battery uh, bubbling and crackling. And that's the sound of the battery uh, starting to gas off. And uh, I'm familiar with that sound because sometimes uh, that my battery will make that noise on my smart charger. Uh, but I, I have faith in my smart charger because uh, it knows when to shut off. Um, when it's done. So uh, at, at the five hour mark I really didn't have much confidence in this little uh, charger so I, I ended the test and I shut it off. So then uh, with my next test I waited about a week and I let the battery in my Crown Vic just naturally drain down and I did this I repeated the same test and I got some very different results. So um, Again, I let the, the VIC set for a week, and this time I was able to run the test for 11 hours. And you can see that my uh, starting voltage, I started it at 12.37. Uh, the milliamps was at 408 current, or 408 milliamps of current. And the electricity uh, pulled out of the wall was 6.4 watts and the transformer was cold. And over the course of 11 hours you can see the voltage has uh, steadily risen in a much different fashion than my first test. Uh, the first hour it jumped up you know about a half a volt and then the second hour it's 1281, 1282, 1283, 1284, 1285, 1286, 1288, 1289, 1291, 1293. So in this uh, charging scenario, it was a little bit more in control of how much voltage uh, it was giving the battery. And I also kept an eye on the uh, current and it, was, it stayed 408 uh, throughout the test. And pretty much it, it did the same exact thing for the wattage being pulled out of the wall. It stayed at 6.4 uh, watts uh, throughout the test. And then one thing I noticed that it did that it didn't do on the other test is in the sixth hour, after six hours, uh, the transformer, it started making an audible buzzing noise. And what I think that buzzing noise is, is that is the, uh, the little device inside the uh, transformer here that is limiting uh, the voltage uh, uh, to try to to try to rein in the power, uh, how much it's giving the battery. So I ran this test for 11 hours and it went up to 12.93 and after 11 hours I was satisfied that uh, this thing is somewhat in control but I still don't trust it 100% so I ended the test. So I think I may have uh, uh, cracked a little uh, mystery on this thing and uh, you don't want to uh, put this on a fully charged battery right off uh, uh, charging it with another smart charger. Uh, you want to you want to let it sit for a little bit and again uh, start it at around 12.37 uh, volts and maybe you'll get better results with that. So uh, let's go over to the car and I'll give you an, a shot of how I got all these uh, measurements.
So one of the first things I did when I got this thing, I looked at the rating sticker on the back of this transformer and it's so tiny I redid it. And uh, it's rated at 15 volts. It's rated at 15 volts at 400 milliamp. And so I wanted to test that. So let me give you a shot of what that looks like. <clears throat> And by the way, these are my two meters I'm using. Uh, this one is just a uh, kilowatt meter, and I've got it running to an, an extension cord over to the wall over here. And this is my little fluke meter. So we can see uh, just with a static uh, voltage uh, reading, with no load, we can see that the uh, charger is putting out 14.49 volts. Now I wanted to check the amperage, but we really can't do that until we put it under load. So we've got to change our meter. Okay, so but I've got that set up. Before I turn it on, I want to give you a shot of the battery voltage and show you how I monitor that. So this is my favorite little uh, plug-in voltmeter. I plug it into the uh, power accessory uh, power power point. Uh, underneath the ashtray. I'll give you a shot of that. So we're at 1231 uh, even with my courtesy lights turned on and so uh, so this is the charger here uh, this is the little LED status light that uh, comes on when it's connected. And this is the positive uh, cable from the battery charger. I've got it to the positive terminal on my battery. And then I have the negative uh, just right here clamped onto a non-conductive um, part of the car. And that's because I'm going to connect my the negative part of my meter here to that. And then it's the electricity is going to come through this little wire. It's going to go through the meter, and it's going to come out this positive uh, meter lead and go to the negative side of the battery over here. So we can see uh, when I make the connection, the the status light comes on, and I want to show you uh, how much uh, juice this thing pulls uh, just being connected. I missed that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to plug it in. And see it's at 2 milliamp. And it should come up to 3. There we go. So that means it's uh that means that little uh status this little status light is going to use 3 milliamps of electricity plugged in. So that's probably why they say uh, disconnect the clamps when not in use. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to uh, plug this thing in. So we've got a status light. Now these are my readings. On the meter, we can see that the charger is putting out 408 milliamps of current to the battery. And we can see that the charger is pulling 6.2 watts of electricity out of the wall. And now let's go into the car and see if the uh, 
voltage is going up. I think the last reading was 1231. So yeah, it looks like it went up to uh, 1233, which is uh, pretty surprising because that charger only puts out 400 milliamp and my courtesy lights use about 700, so uh, that's pretty neat. So uh, that's going to be my review on this little uh, Harbor Freight uh, float charger. And uh, so... Uh, Given all of this testing that I've put through, I really uh, don't, uh, I still don't trust this thing 100%. And uh, this claim on the box of it um, automatically shut off, uh, automatic safety shut off, um, you can forget that. Sh I still think it's a, a good product uh, for $5. I think it does have some good value. And if you're going to get one of these things, I, I strongly recommend you get a voltmeter and monitor your battery voltage while you're doing this. And I would not leave this thing connected for more than 24 hours at a time and uh, come out and at least check on it every 24 hours. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.